Greetings, nerdlings. Tis I, your queen. And today, I am going to talk to you about microscopes and cells. So I hope you enjoy. Hello, and welcome back. So today, we're going to be talking about microscopes and the cell. So the cell is the basic unit of all living things and of all life. So first of all, we're going to talk a little bit about microscopes, which you guys used a lot of last year. So there are two important things to remember when you're using a microscope. One is the resolution. Resolution is the ability to distinguish two objects which are close to each other as still being separate. So if I was to bring my fingers right here and you had a microscope, resolution would be whenever you could see that there are still two objects. Once those objects kind of blur into one, the resolution is bad. Two is magnification. This is how much the image is actually enlarged. So we have different types of microscopes. The first type of microscope that we're going to talk about is the compound light microscope. And those are the types of microscopes that you're going to see in most classrooms. They have two or more lenses. The advantages of light microscopes are that they can show color, they're easy to make, they're easy to use, and they can show live specimen while they're still living, not after we've had to kill them to mount them onto a slide. So the disadvantages is that compared to some of the other microscopes that are out there, they actually have a fairly low magnification. The oil immersion lens can magnify things up to a thousand times. In our classroom, we only have a 40x for our objective lens and a 10x for our eyepiece. So we can only magnify things up to 400 times in our classroom. So this is one of the cool microscopes. It's called an electron microscope. There are two types. There's a transmission electron microscope and a scanning electron microscope. The transmission electron microscope was invented by Ernest Resca in 1932, who also won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1986. The total magnification for this microscope is one million times, right here. So the scanning electron microscope can uh, magnify things up to 100,000 times. The electron microscopes use electrons instead of light. So the advantage is that they have a very, very high magnification. Disadvantage is that it takes a really, really long time to prep them. They're black and white images, so you can't look at anything in color. And since they take such a long time to prep, you also can't look at living organisms. This is a scanning tunneling microscope. It can magnify objects up to a million times. It scans electrons being emitted by the subject. So it can be used to look at living things. This was invented the year that I was born, in 1981, by Binnig and Royer. So micrographs are basically just pictures taken from a microscope. So the images down here are called micrographs. This right here is actually from a cheek cell. That's something we're going to do later in the year. We're actually going to swab our cheeks. We're going to extract DNA from our cheek cells. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So how do we measure with a microscope? Well, with magnification, since we use the compound light microscope, we will always view an object through two lenses. We have the eyepiece, and we also have the objective lens. Those are the ones that rotate around, and you can click them into place. Therefore, the total magnification is always going to be equal to the eye magnification, which most times is 10x, or 10 times that of the human eye, and the objective magnification. In our classroom, we have a 4x, we have a 10x, and we have a 40x. So the maximum magnification we could look at a specimen in our classroom would be at 400 times. So measuring with microscopes. You can determine the diameter of an object, the length or the width of an object, based on the diameter of the field of view measured in microns. So when we use a microscope, we use what we call microns. And you did an exercise with this last year when we did the microscopic measurement lab where you actually used a ruler and you looked under the microscope at the ruler so you could determine how many micrograms were in each millimeter. So cell history. One person I just want to briefly touch on is named Robert Hooke. Robert Hooke was actually the first person to see cells. He saw or observed cork cells, probably after a few bottles of wine. So the last thing that I'm going to talk to you guys about today is the cell theory. The cell theory states that all organisms are made up of cells, 
that cell is the basic unit of organization of all living things, and that all cells come from pre-existing cells. You're going to want to remember the cell theory, so I would highly suggest writing it down.